morning, everybody, and happy Monday. Happy start of a great week, kind of winding down the month here of April, getting ready for May to come up. <clears throat> May is usually a pretty good month for us, so I'm kind of excited for it. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I know the pictures I've seen all around my friends in the U.S., the weather was gorgeous and everybody was out and about. So it seems like it was just a really good weekend and we're just winding up to a really good week. Uh, this week, this one will be kind of quick. So this should be a quick one, in and out, maybe 15, 20 minutes at most. And I thought we'd start with a good Zig Ziglar quote. We've all heard Zig. We've all probably done those sales workshops. But this one is, you can have everything in life that you want if you just give enough other people what they want. And that's kind of the truth. <clears throat> when it comes to sales, that is the biggest thing. We can get everything we want in sales. We just have to make sure the other people understand what they are getting. Uh, that way it's kind of, you know, a solution selling, which is what we do. We find the problem, we give them the solution. So we can have everything if we make sure to give those people the solution. So just kicking off that, <clears throat> happy Monday, everybody. Happy Motivation Monday. There are a few new people here on there, so I'll just go through quickly what our layout is. So we go through a tip of the week. We take a look at what the trends are, and the trends are kind of weird right now with everything that's happening with the short-term market. We take a look at our sales leaders, so those of you that have done, uh, as far as it goes with the fixed benefit and the short term, and then also our sales techniques. So that's kind of our layout that we go through. <clears throat> so we go through tip of the week, the trends, the sales leaders, and the sales techniques. So the tip of the week, as far as it goes for last week, was dealing with IMG, the product training that is coming up, and that is tomorrow, so both Tuesday and Wednesday. IMG is for our international clients. It's a nice quick one to add to your portfolio, really to easy to get appointed with. I've been working with them now for just a ridiculously long amount of time. And I'll tell you, it's just an easy add-on when you're talking to people. Uh, someone calls you up wanting to get travel insurance. I know it happens to me a lot. It's easy for me to tell them that and then go along with some supplements with it, which is kind of what our bread and butter is right now. Sign up for those. We do have limited availability as far as it goes with spots. I believe we max out at those at about 100. So that is what we need to do, so sign up for them, get in there kind of quick. <clears throat> that is the tip of the last week, the tip of the week for this week, is that we are coming out with a new program. It's going to call the Alliance Health Savings Program. So if you kind of take a look at your screen quick for me, it's going to give your clients access. There will be three different levels. You can see the prices at the bottom, so 17 21 and 30 to a huge amount of benefits. These are kind of like those life benefits that we have uh, with the National General, except there's some different ones, so make sure that there's, you know the differences there. The big one is going to be mailmyprescriptions.com. Uh, they'll get immediate access to that, lets them do mail order prescriptions. They're, when we do the training, which is gonna come out in a week or two, because this program isn't live yet, it's coming out soon, you'll see that there are prescriptions where your clients can get up to 93% off. Uh, it says about an uh, average of 88% savings. We all know we would like to see it, to believe it. I'm in the same boat as you with that, but I just wanted to put this on the radar that this is coming out. I will tell you with the uh, Mail My Prescriptions as well, they have an average of two to three day delivery. There's the telemedicine which your clients can purchase. I know it's a lot of times what people want is, hey, I want that free uh, dial a doctor. It's called telemedicine here. They can get that on all three different level cards there. They can jump into it right away, so they'll get immediate access. Uh, there's also access to the Delta Dental, the uh, Cigna network as well, which will give them about 15 to 50% savings. So this is going live soon. You will see these trainings popping up on the HCP calendar, just like those IMG ones. If you haven't ever signed up for a training here, it's pretty powerful, pretty easy to do. Go to training. There'll be a calendar. So HCP sales training, there'll be a huge calendar. You can sign up for these when they go live. Uh, those are going to be coming up, so get ready for those. Again, they will be a limit in the training rooms, about 101. And I'll tell you, with everything that's going on right now, the trainings are maxing out pretty quick. So to take a look at our trends, let me throw a few of these up for us. Kind of a weird week, I guess, last week. So we had a decrease in short-term medical, nothing that we are super shocked by. Uh, we know that the decrease is happening. It was about a 50-50% mix between NatGen and Golden Rule. Uh, Wanted to throw that up there because NetGen is traditionally about 80% of our sales. So Golden Rule is really getting up and going there. So if that's something that you haven't had a lot of experience with that Golden Rule, take a look at it. Pretty good. Increase in fixed benefit, obviously, since those short-term plans are decreasing, we are going to have an increase in those fixed benefit sales. And we're having a really healthy growth. By that, I mean we are just blowing up in those sales. Um, we are doing about 50-50 as well. So between NetGen and VBA. 
pretty powerful plans there. That NAT Gen 1 is still new. I know they just came out with that HEP plan, the Hospital Expense Protection Plan, if you haven't taken a look at that. There was no change really in the accident sales. So even though the, you know, we're kind of flip-flopping with the short term and the fixed benefit, we're still making sure to add on our accident supplements. That's a huge one, especially with fixed benefit policies, since we know that they don't always pay the absolute most when it comes to accidents. That's why we always make sure to add on accidents. Pretty healthy mix between NatGen and Healthy America. Critical illness, increase in that, which is always good because those are the ones that our clients will use the most and the ones that pay really good commission. 50-50 between CBL and NatGen. I wanted to throw up the mix on that one as well because traditionally CBL is about 80 to 95% of our sales. Uh, the NatGen standalone critical illness has been popping up really, really quick. That's not something you'd sell a lot. It's a pretty good product comes with a 10-year term life as well. So it's a mix between a CI and a term life product, up to 100K. And then no change in dental. Uh, as far as it goes with quantity, really, it's the Golden Rule Dental. Almost all of our dental sales were from Golden Rule. So pretty good. You, traditionally, we did not gen PPO, but we really jumped over to Golden Rule. So that's kind of what's going on with the trends in the market, flip-flopping with the short-term medical. We are still adding on those accidents. We're seeing more value in the critical illness since fixed benefits are cheaper and we're able to add it on more and no change in the dental world, which is good because we want to make sure to add dental for retention. Now to do some shout outs, <clears throat> starting there with the limited, uh, the limited med or the fixed benefit. First, she was only not in first for about a week. So Katya, good job, yet again in first, just knocking it absolutely out of the park. Andrew, they're in second again. He uh, went down one, and then Robert, you are in third. So good job, you three, on being the top three leaders with the limited med products. Those are huge, and that's kind of what our market is right now. Our shout out, as far as it goes, for short terms. Let's get them all in there. So Jacob, good job in first. Jacob absolutely killed it. So good job, Jacob Gordon there. Uh, Susan, good job in second place. And Elaine, third place. Elaine, I will tell you, she's been on the board pretty consistently with almost every product. So what she does is what is working out there. As I told you, these are kind of quick and today's gonna be especially quick. It should take us about 15 minutes. We're gonna talk about our sales technique. Our sales technique this week is really going to be the top three reasons customers don't buy. And why I wanted to go over this is I wanted you guys to think about this as we are selling this week. They are kind of important. Uh, every time a customer doesn't buy, I kind of like to go back and mark the reason why, because that gives me an idea of where I need to work. So if you've been in sales for any length of time, you know the concept of you can take yes or no, but you can't take a maybe, right? So what we're going to talk about today is really those no's and why the no is so important and why it's important to understand the reasons why our customers don't buy. Because if you can figure out why they're not buying, then you can catch the trend, kind of like what everybody should be doing, and make adjustments to your sales process, and then, then in turn raise your close rate. Us being outside of open enrollment, now is the time for us to actually practice this and actually get up and going. I'm not going to lie, if closing is something you're having troubles with, understanding the why they're not buying is going to help increase your close percentage pretty quick. Um, again, closing isn't a contest of who has the biggest stick. Let's just start with that. It's not who can hit the client over the head the hardest. It's uh, really the client, the contest of who has listened. Kind of like what we started with that Zig Ziglar quote. Who's listened? Who is able to solve the problem? Um, you know, you have to listen to your client's needs, you have to listen to their story, and then you have to make them feel heard and fix their problem. Really, I mean, what sales really is, if you strip down all the fancy words, all the steps, all the philosophy, everything that we go through, it's just listening and fixing. That's it, it's pretty blunt. I know it sounds simple, but we all know it's really not. So there are three main reasons that customers don't buy. Um, in any sales process, really, it's gonna be the three main reasons they don't buy. Um, I know you've heard thousands of different excuses but if you break them into categories, there's really three main reasons. Um, I'm gonna make the assumption first off, as we are going through here, here's a big one that you are talking to the decision maker. Uh, some people like to add that column, like, hey, I didn't actually talk to who needs to be sold. That's more of a problem in your front end sales process, personally, not really a, a reason why they didn't buy, it's because you actually didn't talk to the person. So first off, we're gonna make the assumption you did talk to the decision maker, and uh, you know, if not, there's other things we can talk about. <clears throat> the first reason is, price. You're probably rolling your eyes and thinking, obviously, it's price, right? Well, there's obvious raw price of the product, right? You're going through, you're talking to them, they don't have enough money. That's a different one. The concept 
of this price means that you are actually pitching a product that they don't see the accurately perceived value in. So it's not more price, it's more about value. If there's not enough value in the product, the customer will not buy it in any situation. When I talk about painting the picture, if you've listened to my sales techniques, if you've gone through those, using the example about how the product works to paint the picture for the client, that's the why. If you're painting the value to the customer in mind, you're letting them weigh the risks and the benefits and come to the conclusion that yes, this product is worth what you're stating. That's one of the reasons why we hold off to the price at the very end. But, you know, We go through all the products and hey, are these going to work for you? That is really going through the perceived value. They're making them make the decision. I can't tell you how many times a customer has purchased and I talk to them about other products that they were buying as we were filling out the application and I find out that another agent pitched the almost exact same product. Why didn't they buy it from the other agent? We both had the same product, we both found the same problem, uh, we both found the same solution. It's because I went through and I created value for the client. I created a picture, I painted it. Easy way to fix this. So kind of really easy way to paint a picture and start working on perceived value is use this phrase, Earlier you told me, earlier you told me, and to paint the picture of how the product works with their family. You know you want, you know you'd like to go to the doctor, well earlier you told me this is how you're going to use it. Pretty easy. Uh, you know in the past they've fallen a broken bone, gotten in an accident, use that, talk to them, weave that picture, make them understand the value. Price is not just raw money and that's where a lot of people go wrong. They say hey you know what price, it's just going to be how much it costs. No. Absolutely not. It's really going to be painting the picture of, hey, here's the cost. We talked about budget beforehand. I'm going to keep it in. You know that you have that much money to send, spend. But what I am pitching you, you don't see the value in. Okay? That is something where you have to paint the picture. If people don't buy for price. Honestly, a lot of the time it's either you're not getting an accurate budget up front, which is one thing to work on, honestly. Your sales process, we should be getting a budget up front before we even go through and pitch our products. I need to know what your budget is. Because I can have the absolute best health insurance plan in the world, but if I haven't kept that affordable, I'm not helping them and I'm not helping me. So the first one with price, it's really going to be, are you painting a proper picture? Hey, earlier you told me. That's the easiest phrase to add into your sales arsenal to increase your close as far as it goes for price. So as you're going through, if the customer tells you, hey, you know what, I just can't afford it. It's not right. Think back. Hey, did I get a proper budget up front? And second, did I paint a clear enough picture for them? If you're saying, you know what, I really don't get enough from my sales process to paint a clear picture, you're right. Stop, go back to your sales process and find places where you can ask questions to get the material needed. If you've gone through any of the sales training here too, you you found out that fact finding, really your investigation stage, that's a lot, it's 60 to 70% of your sales process. That's where you should be spending. Uh, if you're a Sandler fan, going through the Sandler sales system, over a Ziegler, Sandler, Sandler, you should know that fact finding. We are building rapport. We are getting them to know it. And we are kind of wearing down the layers. That's the big circle process, right? If you're taking a look at that, it's the same thing. We need to find what is going to help build value and find the stories that we can pull out. So easy ones to add is, hey, earlier you told me. That is the first biggest reason why customers don't buy. The second reason why they don't buy here is going to be benefits. And are the benefits a right match? So earlier you told me that you know selling is basically finding a problem and fixing it, right? Well, the number two reason people don't buy is that their salesperson does not do a good job matching their benefits to their problem. I wanted to bring this up because what's going on right now is that there's a lot of confusion with fixed benefit and who your fixed benefit customers are. Uh, you know, you need to create yourself a little roadmap. When am I gonna for sure go short term? When am I for sure gonna go fixed benefit? listening to the customer and finding out exactly what their needs are. If you're only selling one product consistently, and I hear this a lot, you know, the one person, they sell the same build, it's gonna be a $5,000 short-term medical, 100% co-insurance. Guess what, that's not the right match for everyone. It's not, some people $5,000 makes them uncomfortable. Some people don't even want a ding deductible, right? That's the nice thing, with these fixed benefits, you can talk about them with the benefits saying, hey, you know what, this plan has no deductible. I was doing a training for new agents whew, last Wednesday, and that is how I opened up with the fixed benefit. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to show you a plan that doesn't have a deductible. Everybody's head's turned in the room. Why do I bring that up? Because new agents are just like your customers. They're un uneducated to the market. That simple phrase, everybody wanted it by the end. I had people come up saying, hey, where can I get that policy? Pretty easy, right? Your customer will buy when they know the benefits fit their needs. 
if their needs are, you know, what they're concerned about, and if it's like, hey, what happens if I get cancer? Uh, and there's no special protection for that, why would the customer buy? Uh, they need to understand the benefits, but they also need to make sure that they're the right ones. The one question I always make sure to ask when I'm pairing things up, as far as, like, let's say deductible goes, right away would be, hey, how many times in the past 10 years have you gotten into uh, an accident that costs over $1,000 or had hospital bills over $1,000? That's going to help me kind of figure out, first off, what the deductible is. The second one would be, how often does, you know, you and anybody on this policy go to the doctor? I want to find out how they're going to use it. If I'm talking to somebody who's like, hey, you know what, I never go to the doctor, and I've never gotten in an accident, sweet, I can go a high deductible on a short-term medical. If I'm talking to somebody who says, no, I'm really concerned about going to a doctor, um, I like to go. Um, I don't go super often, but it's a, it is a concern I have of mine. I usually go in for, you know, a typical cold or flu. I'm like, okay, how many times have you had a medical bill over $1,000? You know, maybe once in the past 10 years. That's actually a really good fixed benefit customer. Because what is going to happen? They're going to get access to the multi-plan network. That is one of the things. Hey, you know, I'm concerned about a doctor. Great. Well, I'm going to make sure you have access to a doctor. And if you go to that doctor, I'm going to help pay for it. Just like, you know, major medical plans or other short-term plans. I'm going to give you assistance to go to the doctor. I'm not going to pay for everything. I'm going to give you assistance into going to the doctor. If the big what-if happens, guess what? These plans are going to help pay benefits for surgeries. They're going to help pay benefits a little bit for accidents. But because of that, I added on an extra accident plan. I added on an extra critical illness plan. So if you get into a critical illness, this will hold you over until we can get you into a major medical policy at the end of the year. It's really finding the right benefits. If you are having issues saying, you know, I'm not matching up my plans right, go through. In our training library, there is a video about fact-finding. Watch it. That will give you an idea on what kind of questions you can ask to make sure you're matching the right benefits. If it's also, I don't understand the policies, okay, I get that. Go into the training area of our library there and find the different carrier videos. If there's any of them that you don't understand, you can also reach out to me. I'll give you my email address at the very end here. And I'd say the third reason that customers don't buy, and at least to me, is understanding. So the one of them is the benefits. Price is always the biggest one, and price is really value. The, the second would be benefits. You know, it's not the right product. Hey, this is the concern I told you. You didn't match it up. First one is, hey, I told you all this, and you didn't build a policy that I see value. And the second one is, you didn't listen to me. The third one is understanding. Okay. This is more about how the sales process happened. We all live and breathe insurance. We can talk about durable medical equipment, out-of-pocket maxes, exclusions, but they don't make sense to your client. I can't tell you how many clients don't know what a deductible is. I can. I was teaching a group of agents. I walk into the room and I'm like, you know, you're, you're all licensed sales agents, newly licensed, my dad, but they went through the classes. I'm like, okay, somebody explain to me how a deductible works. And people struggled. Explain to me how co-insurance works, right? I want you to keep this in mind that people don't understand the simple things. So when you're sitting there going, hey, you know what? This plan is a $5,000 deductible, 80-20 co-insurance, up to 7150 out of pocket max. And with this, added to $5,000 AME. If you ever say that to a customer, slap your hand. Uh, that's not how you make a sale, okay? Do you know when to tell if a client doesn't understand insurance? This is one of my biggest giveaways. When I'm talking to them on the phone, I'm like, okay, so, you know, so you're here to shop for insurance. Okay, well, I got you shopping. Well, I'm looking for an 80-20 plan. If someone ever says that to me, I'm like, okay, I know I need to spend extra time with them to make sure that they understand what they need to because 80-20 tells you what? Nothing. Just what a co-insurance is, right? Just the percentage. I need them to understand. The number one reason that customers don't buy is that there's no way that they can understand the benefits. Why would they buy something they don't understand? Um, also, if you have any retention problem, working with retention departments, they say, you know what, the number one reason is they don't get how it works. For them to go to the doctor. They say it's the number one reason clients cancel is they don't understand how to go to the doctor. They want to use their plan and they can't. You need to be able to assess your client's understanding right away and get into the, when you're getting to every conversation, also assume that your client has no idea how anything in insurance works. Uh, they'll let you know if they do. It's human nature, just to let you know, it's human nature to agree with someone even if you don't understand so you don't show weakness, especially when it comes to sales. Our clients are notorious for bobbing and shaking their head. That's not a good sign. Again, so that's why we tell stories to paint that picture. The client doesn't buy from you because they don't understand, they will buy from someone else who can explain the product better. And I'm really not kidding. Uh, story for you quick. I was working in a call center doing some work. 
uh, with some of the new agents. They just hired on a lot of agents. And I was Y courting with two agents right across the aisle from each other, listening to the first one, going through trying to explain the product. And it was just a mess. It was just an absolute mess. And the client goes, you know what? Uh, I have to think about this for a little while and I'll get back to you. And so we're talking through it. And I have in my other ear the other agent. Phone rings. Exact same person. He goes through the exact start of the sales process that we were talking through. He just explained the product better. And guess what? The client bought. I'm not kidding you. They were sitting across from each other. We pulled both calls and started to compare. So you need to go through. You need to paint the picture and let your client understand how it works. You know, also, you need to make sure to find a way for them to be able to ask questions without feeling stupid. If you get this... This is the really common one that they don't understand. Hey, just send me something. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? That means that they don't understand. Great, you know what, I have a thousand brochures. What specific thing are you wondering about? Just so I can get you the right information out. What I'm saying is, hey, you know what? I understand that you don't understand what's going on. I have a lot of options. What's the one specific thing? That way I can go through and re-explain. That stupid phrase, talking about, hey, you know what, I have a lot of different brochures here for products. What specific thing do you're wondering about? Or if they say, hey, I have to talk to my spouse. Sometimes that's the truth, right? We understand that. The other time it's, I don't understand. And you know what happens when they talk to their spouse about it? Oh, great. You know what? What kind of questions do you think your spouse is going to have? Just so I can, you know, arm you up and make sure you have what you need. Works really well. I can't tell you how many times I've said stuff like that. And it just closes the person. Just saying, you know what? <laughs> I completely understand this policy. I get it. But, you know, my spouse has no idea how a deductible works. Well, that's bull because you're actually the one who doesn't understand it, but that's okay. I want to go through and make sure that they understand. So we need to make sure to paint a picture. Two specific pictures you need to paint on every call is how it's going to work when they walk into a doctor. Another one is how it's going to work if they get injured. Those are the two pictures you need to paint. If you can paint those two pictures, you'll be able to close just a little higher. So as you can see, as we are going through these, went kind of quick here. The three reasons clients don't buy really, it honestly comes down to improving your fact finding and finding better ways of telling stories. If you want any help on any of these, there's some pretty good videos there. One of them would be the fact finding video or investigation video up there at hcpsales.com in the training section. The other one is how to present a, a plan properly. Whew, that's a lot of peas going on there. So go through, take a look at those videos. They're pretty useful. They're kind of quick. You may have to jump halfway through because I believe we have some of the Motivation Monday on them. If you do have any questions as you are going through those videos, feel free to reach out to me there at the bottom, training at hcpsales.com. That does go directly to me. Um, I will not be able to get back to you. I'm leaving uh, for a carrier trip towards the end of the week, but we have Tammy coming up next Monday. She's going to go through some pretty great information and talk about that new product a little more for you. And our quote that we're going to end with today is, it's all about listening first, then selling. That is a huge one. Think about it. It's all about listening first. Isn't that what we said? Hey, we're going to fact find so we can listen to tell stories, and then I can actually start selling you. If you need any help, reach out at training at hcpsales.com. This was a quick one. It was hopefully a powerful one. You took one or two things away from. But if you need anything, let us know, and I hope you have a great week and a great Monday.